Rica is Josue Genaro Almaraz Rivera. He is a PhD researcher in the research group on advanced artificial intelligence of the Tecnológico de Monterrey. He currently is at the University of Ottawa in Canada. He has worked with major companies such as Apple and Meta. So let's welcome him with a big round of applause. Hello, good morning. This project began as a result of the need of the fact that we are suffering from attacks every second, but not only in terms of volume, but also in terms of area. So the AI systems that analyze the performance should be able to rapidly adapt to these things, in other words, to generalize it. So this project was done for my PhD thesis. This is part of my thesis, and the title is Enhancing IoT Network Security, Unveiling the Power of Self-Supervised Learning Against DDoS Attacks. The outline of my presentation will cover the following points. I will be doing an introduction and problem definition, then the solution proposal, the methodology, then the experimental results and discussion, and finally, conclusions and future work. So, for the coming year, for 2025, it is expected that globally there will be more than 30 billion IoT active device connections globally. So this can provide an enormous attack surface if we're speaking about smartphones. These are very close to the end user, so these are likely to be subject to data theft and DDoS attacks and botnets. As a result, it is very important to protect these IoT devices. What have we been doing over the past years to date? So in the terms of artificial intelligence, they tag data. In other words, AI ultimately seeks to emulate human intelligence. So a child, if you wish to teach a child what an elephant is, you show the child an elephant, an image of an elephant. You don't need to show them the child thousands of images. So emulating AI and security in the current innovation teams, they show 35, 45,000, 55,000 flows, where each flow is labeled. This flow is a normal flow. This flow, 1534, is a DDoS attack based on TCP. Flow 99,000 is based on UDP, and so on. So in practical terms, this is very slow. It is not scalable. And it is also very expensive, because you have to dedicate time and money to make that part of the labeling. So the purpose is to provide something that emulates the way we as human beings understand. So this is what we call self-supervised learning. This consists of two main changes. The first is a phase where knowledge is extracted on the topic we wish to deal with. And then we adapt that knowledge to the specific application we wish to develop. So we can inject the data we have in production, we, the stream, the raw data, and in the initial stage, we generate a training model. In other words, this is a large neural network that is very robust. Following that, we can use this labeling, but we'll be using five or 10. So as to do a synchronization of the large model we have in order to adapt this to the specifications we need. For example, in DDoS attacks, an application could be a binary detection, whether this is an attack or not, a multi-class attack, if the DDoS attack based on HTTP, UDP, or based on this given layer 4, 7, or application transfer. So basically, it's like that. These are two main phases where we inject the data we have in the stream, the raw data. We generate a large model and then adapt it. So there are three main contributions. Number one is we have pioneering of experimentation in IoT networks and leveraging the self-supervised learning, SSL. We 
as a result of the diagram I showed you, have a very robust model, which is like a third model, and this can also be used for applications. So if we compare things more strictly with other publications in the literature, we compare four different axes with different works that were published in our in the red rectangle, we see that uh, this work is the only state of art that <laughs> used the self-supervised learning option. This is learning done through contrast. And it's the only one that does this. If we look at the two initial stages, in the initial stage, we use a large amount of IoT data. So you might say, how do you inject the data and how does a neural network learn? In the initial stage, what you can define, as we did in this case, is a contrast learning strategy. This implies that if we have all the net flows and wish to do detection through the flow network, the network will generate the flow. We'll notice the difference between groups and the group shows a distance between those that are nearer. In technical terms, the intra-class distance should be smaller. Therefore, it can identify patterns. It can identify behaviors that are then synchronized to the application you need. The methodology we proposed is divided into three different steps. The first step is the data part. In the data part, we use something what we called bot IoT which was published in the University of New South Wales in Australia. And then, in addition to that, we developed something thanks to a FRIDA subsidy, which is in the IEEE data repository. And this is what we call DADMD DOS IoT. These flows contain different data, and we do uh, image conversion. This image conversion is done because we trust in the premise that it's easier to explain something that is not from an area, who's not an expert, that in fact how a DDoS attack looks like, what it looks like. Then because we have neural networks, we do parameter synchronization, we look for the best values, and finally we do a model training and evaluation where we compare this with a self-supervised learning option and with that we do binary classification of the attacks we classify it based on protocols and this is what the methodology looks like and you can read the reference at the in the footnote from the variables we use, there are 15 variables. This feature, this set of features has already been used in other experiments. You can check this code you are for a publication I published in this topic. Now, what do these variables imply? First, that total number of packets in the transaction, the total number of bytes in the transaction, the average duration at records, at rate level, and the total packets per second in the transaction. So if at some time you might have asked yourself what a DDoS attack looks like, this is the way it looks like. We generate images in scales of gray with values from 0 to 1. So that's why they are white, black, and gray images. On the left, we have the bot I IoT from the New South Wales University, and the LATAM version, which is the one we created in collaboration with University of Monterrey and Colombia. And on the image on the left, in the first line, you have normal traffic. And you note that if we want to imagine what a DDoS attack is, this is like two hills with normal traffic. And in the last line, the DDoS attack, which is based on HTTP, you see that these are black circles. So this is a simpler way to explain the variations we have as well as a way in which the neural network can identify the patterns. As part of the results, when we did two different experiments, one was used with the intention of seeing the capacity to adapt to new scenarios. We obtained results that improving the supervised learning carried out over several years we increased the precision. We 
identified false positive, and this is close to 1%. You see this in the last column. This is the F1 score. This is the average between the false positives and the detection of the attacks. To conclude, Thanks to this article, we managed to show the efficacy of self-supervised learning, position this as a suitable alternative to supervised learning in the context of linear classification performance. In addition to that, results over 5% in precision, only 1% in F1 score in certain tests. And the positive thing is that our results highlight the promise of self-supervised learning in bolstering the security of IoT networks. And this is not only for IoT networks, but we also have research on what happens if this would be applied against malware and ransomware. And I can say that self-supervised learning is here to stay. That is a way forward. And the research and development teams should be looking into this paradigm. And in business terms, this is cheaper and faster. In terms of future work, this way to detect this through synthetic images will allow us to do measurement and classification in terms of time to see the capacity of flows that can be detected over a given period of time. With that aim, we'd like to implement this in a production network, the streaming data, to properly measure this time performance. In LATAM DDoS IoT, we have included this in the data set of the IEEE. You can download it through this QR code. And this, with that I have shared with you, has also been published in the journal Sensors. And you can also check this out in this QR code of the journal. Thank you very much. I'm Douglas from Brazil. Congratulations on your presentation. The concept of doing a visual representation is very smart, very intelligent. I found that very interesting. And I stopped to think about something when I was following your presentation. It is always an issue when we speak about machine learning for denial of service. And this is because of the computational load to be able to analyze all this information. So ultimately, one needs to analyze recent data. And we speak about five minutes, one minute, 30 seconds. And we also have to outline a profile so that we can compare this over weeks or days of the week or days of the month. So the computational burden to create all this data and to generate a parameter ends up being quite enormous. This makes it almost unfeasible from the financial standpoint, namely if you wish to build this and take this to practical terms. Ultimately, we have to end up investing 100,000 US dollars in IT so as to mitigate attacks that are 30 to 40 gigas, and it might not be worthwhile. My question, therefore, is how what is a computational burden in the context of this scenario? Well, that's a very relevant question because the next implementation stage involves this concept. A quick response to be able to do the first stage, that is creating a big, uh, a very large neuronal uh, network. You have to train the, the, uh, everybody for one uh, day. But once you have it with the five or seven data that you have labeled, it's just seconds. So uh, the burden or the big load was in one day. And once you deploy the model, it's a two-stage training. So if you wanted to adapt to new flows, etc., what you do, what we have implemented personally, is that, for instance, on uh, Sunday, that uh, is not uh, such a busy day, you can update your model with the data of the last week, and for several minutes, uh, you have that uh, uh, to be adapted, because you need uh, the latest data. I don't know whether that answers your question. Yes, I think it, you did. But I think that still, 
we have a lot of work uh, ahead to be able to transform that into something that we can all use. But I see it as very smart. Well, may I add something? At last year's LACNIC, what happens when a company wants to do their AI um, uh, uh, architecture. If you do it with one Mbox, you can do it with that. So they published an uh, uh, I published an article where I propose an architecture. I, I already checked it, and based on uh, Kubernetes, we do an architecture with cool and uh, uh, and uh, the article explains step by step uh, how to. Uh, uh, connected and this uh, neuron um, network can be connected. And the last QR that I put you there, you can see more information of, about what I was saying. Thank you. Well, we wanted to thank Jose for his presentation on the use of uh, server supervised uh, learning to improve the security in the networks. So, a round of applause for him.